all right, so through the years, obviously the way that designers work and coordinate together has changed just because technology has changed. Now you have like Pyware and you have like these Google shared files and you have virtual drumline and Sibelius and Finale that's just like people can work very, very remotely. Um, and you and Dave Glide obviously have a really unique relationship in the way that you guys orchestrate the shows where he writes some of the stuff, you write some of the stuff. And then from my understanding too, like some of that is turned over to just, all right, here's the idea for the base thing. You guys take and run, or here's the idea for the idea for the quad thing. You guys take and run. How does that dynamic kind of work and how has it been so cohesive through the years? Um, I taught Dave, he was in the snare line of blue devils in 1984. So, um, we have that relationship and we've always had that relationship. You know, he was a great snare drummer and now he's in charge of the blue devil musical book. How cool is that to have a snare drummer in charge of what the brass play? It's gotta be convenient. And when the drum, and when the drum should play and when they shouldn't play and all that stuff. So Dave puts together, he puts together the whole map, right? He puts together our musical package and I'm talking about pretty much everything. Um, he leaves a lot of holes for me. And like you were saying, we, we, we get a lot of this stuff, not so much last year because of, the lack of vets, you know, but there's many years where I'll go up to the guys in the line and I'll say, so, um, what do you got? <laughs> about 190 beats a minute. You know, I need a, I need a quad lick. That's going to be about eh, 10 seconds. What do you, what do you, what's, what's cool. What have you guys seen lately? You know, and then the guys start just throwing stuff out, you know, and we've actually had some of the guys just write it out. Yeah. Write that out for us, you know, until so they'll write it out and we'll, we, we might tweak it a little bit, but it's, it comes from the guys in the line. A lot of it. Uh, we didn't do that much last year just because of the situation, um, not knowing them, to be honest, you know, as much as we did. We had some of the guys that had some good ideas throughout the season that we had put in the show, and we definitely put in the show. They go, you know, it might be better if we do this. And I go, do it. Absolutely, it's in. Because they're the ones playing it. So, right. you know, Glide and myself, um, I took over. He was the caption head in 92 and 93 for Blue Devils when I was at Santa Clara. And then when I came back in 94, I became the captain at Anna Ranger at the time. And it was like, you know, Dave's really friggin' talented. So we don't want to lose that part of what he was starting to create with Blue Devils. So we got together and I used to, he lived in Fresno. I lived in Northern California. It's like a three hour drive, right? Or I used to get an Amtrak, a three hour train ride. And I would literally take the train to Dave's house in Fresno, hang out all day. And we'd sit down and write together. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? You know, I've never seen this before. How about this? Yeah, this is kind of cool. And we would literally just put put beats down on paper together. And then I would take it. And on the three-hour train ride back on my first laptop back in the day, I would sit there and, <laughs> you know, and try to try to formulate it and put it in a package that looks good that we could actually hand out to the members. And so that that's how the whole thing started. And when Dave started the range, he started the range in the brass parts in 03. So before that, oh, it was wow. just percussion. Yeah. So when 03 kicked in, that's when, okay, Dave, you're the musical director. You're now writing the brass music as well. Cause he always wanted to, and we always knew he could, you know, so he kind of took that over in 03 and, um, Phenomenal, ever since cool he's, show. Yeah, yeah. And ever since, ever since he started doing that, it got to be a little bit more involved as far as the whole package, of course. And so it got to the point where, okay, anytime the brass is playing, you should write what you think the drum should be playing, whether it's right out the parts or right out the ideas. And we'll take it from there or whatever, you know, because one brain we always thought was a better, and his brain is way out there. So it's really cool. <laughs> so, so we, we let him just go off on all that stuff since 03, pretty much. Um, I get my licks in there. I get little, my little drum featurettes in there and, you know, we'll do a lot of different things. Um, matter of fact, we're doing a little plug. We're doing a, um, a clinic at PASIC this year. Oh, on okay. Thursday at a, Thursday morning, 11 o'clock, I think it is. But it's me, Dave Glide, and Brian Dinkle. Brian Dinkle writes our front ensemble for Blue Devils. And it's basically under the hood of the Blue Devil percussion section. And it's how we create the show and how we write the show, because everybody's always asking, how, how do you guys do this? Because it's not just a one guy. You know, It's not one guy writing it. It's definitely a collaboration of a bunch of us. So we're picking one, one part of the show that we did last year that we were all totally involved in and how the idea started and where, where it ended up to where it actually started as far as how it turned out at finals. So it'll be pretty cool. Just the whole concept of how we do things. Well, let's just see if we can get Dave and Brian on. We'll just do it right now. I'm just um, <laughs> yeah. Text I'll him. Call him. I'll call him. <laughs> uh, that's awesome though. And what an incredible selflessness from all parts involved too. 
uh, where you just kind of like leave your ego at the door. Because I'm sure many people could like assume or wonder like, well, why didn't Scott just write the whole thing? Or why doesn't Dave just write the whole thing? It's like, obviously the Blue Devils mentality and pretty much everybody I've ever talked to that's marched there is like, well, it's just the show first. Yep. It's, first it's and the foremost. show first and we'll get this right and then we'll we'll figure the rest out. Um, and so why why we're on that, I got to say something. Okay. And I think this is this is pretty important. This is I'm a statistic freak. Okay. I mean, I keep stats. I'm now a you're sports speaking guy. my language. I, I love sports, you know, and I, I love stats. So I have stats of every drum judge that ever judged us and what the numbers they gave us and who was first, second, third, fourth, and their comments and you know the time of the year. That's I mean, awesome. I, I I do all that stuff. <laughs> way 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 too much, but it keeps me busy on the bus, right? A man after ride. my heart. So one of my totally outside the box stats that I absolutely love with my career as caption head with the Blue Devils since 94. Um, I've always said it's not about the captions. You know, it's always about the ring. It's always about the success of the organization, not about these little drum things, which are only half the points now that they used to be anyways, right? So you go for the big points if you want to say you're playing the game. The numbers are upstairs. They're not down on the field, which we always look at first as far as entertainment value upstairs. But with that in mind, um, every time we've won percussion with the Blue Devils since 94, and that's a, a, a lot of them, um, we won the show. We won the ring. We never won percussion without winning the ring. Wait, which so is a really let, bizarre... Let me get that straight. There's not it's been... It's a bizarre like, stat. Let, let me get that Go straight ahead. to make sure I understood what you just said. There's never been yep. a season where you won a drum trophy and didn't win a ring. Since, since 94. 94. Since 94. Since I became captain head. Correct. I mean, Every time we won a drum trophy, we won the ring. It's and, I mean, like... and, and you go back to the 80s with, you know, me and Tom Float. I mean, we won four years in a row, and we, I think we won one title that year. We won one ring that year, or that, that, that time frame, you know? So back then, it was about the captions, because the captions were worth more points back then, too. Right? Yeah. I mean, if a, if a drum judge gave you 10 points back then, 10 points went towards that total score. See, what now that tells me... Gives you 10 points, 5 points goes towards that total score. See, so from... A... From an analytic standpoint, what that tells me is the way you evaluate that as a designer and a design staff is if like, you have to – like a good percussion section leads to a good drum corps. Like they're your sense of tempo. They're, your, they're the backbone of everything happening on the field, whether it's the front, the drum set player, the battery, the bass line, whatever aspect it is, the horn line and the guard are getting tempo – from the battery a lot of the time. Like, yes, the drum majors, they are communicating it to everybody on the field, but it's the, it's the percussion. If we're all being honest, like it's, it's not the drum major. <laughs> yeah. We all, we all know how that works. Uh, the but drum major watches, watches the drum line, right? Right. It is. I, I almost want to go back now and look at 94, 96, 97. I know Rennick's won uh, drums a lot in the past handful of years where the core has won. 2009 and then 2015. Are those the years yeah. that... Those are the drum trophies. There's more you championships 12. in there. You forgot 12. Or 12's yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, 2012. Yeah, you all beat so, us in 12. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so those are the drum trophies. Um, but I want to know how many years... Everybody's got to eat. Brass, I want to know how many years guard. a core won that the drum line didn't. Would it be all the years BD didn't... Well, no. I want to go um, look at that now. How many years... I, to figure that. I bet that would... <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting, uh, in interesting addition to your Instagram, the Scott Johnson data analytics of uh, drum yeah. core and all the spreadsheets and stuff oh, yeah. you have. <laughs> I can tell you, 19, 2019, 2022, we didn't win drums, but we won the ring. So there's two years right there. Right. I and couldn't I tell that you. That was Rennick, right? Well, no, 19. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Rennick seems Rennick. to win drums a lot and not win the ring with the core. Recently. Yeah. Recently, recently yeah. in recent history. Yeah. Uh, Fair. And there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of brass yeah. programs. There's a lot of brass programs that win a lot but never win the ring. Carolina yeah. Crown. Crown. Yeah. 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 Same with color guards. Interesting. Yep. Of course, there's a lot of BD color guard uh, Zingali trophies too. Back in the day, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh man. Um, Let's see. Here. But you know, it's so it's, it's it's about the product. It's about the final product, and that's the way we've looked at it. I mean, a, a funny story when we. We're learning the show this past season, 2022. We got most of it on the field, and I'm sitting there going, God, our staging sucks. What the hell? <laughs> but for the battery, you know? I'm going, well, we're not going to get any drum points this year, you know? And 
So I'm writing down a little list of things that we might be able to improve on. And maybe we can move them here and get them closer up here so a judge can actually evaluate them. And I remember I went to our visual guys and had a little meeting and talked about it. And our visual guy literally said to me, and I won't tell you which visual person it was because we got a few. They go, oh, shit, I forgot about that. I forgot about the judge can't go out there anymore. And I went, <laughs> what? No, you didn't. They go, no, it seriously, for I you. forgot about that. And I go, you guys wanted this. Well, they didn't want it because they wanted yeah, what yeah, I wanted. You all voted. The day, but their people wanted it. Yeah. Their community. So that's, I mean, their that's, aspect that's, of the that's, activity. Yeah. That's an example of how we don't look at anything caption-wise. It's like, okay, how's this going to look? How's this going to help the core win, right? Or how to be successful. That's that's <laughs> crazy to hear because, like, it's it's funny to me because you all play the game, as we've talked about earlier in this recording, of, okay, here's the world we live in. <laughs> But, like, at the same time, you kind of just do your thing. The framework well, of how you all structure the show, you're all very talented designers, very experienced. You know what you're doing at this point. But you have those aspects of this is the world we live in. We have to try to get points where we can doing X, Y, Z. But it, there's also a huge element of we do what we do. We know what we do produces yeah. a good product. And we're going to stick to that at the core of it at the end of the day and then we'll we'll do things here and there to to play along with what's going on but we know we're going to put a good product out doing what we've been doing for years and we kind of stick but, to that at the end of the day you know and i guess i'm tainted because i see it every day but when you say that we do what we do i think we're different every year i don't think we do the same thing at all i know battery wise we're always trying to find new vocabulary what can we do different sometimes it's it works approach. sometimes it doesn't I feel like when I say you all do what you do, it's the, the approach. When you walk up to the Blue Devil's Horn line in the lot, when you walk up to the front ensemble, the guard, whatever, you know it's the Blue Devils is kind of what I'm getting at, I feel like. I, you all have or, very varied shows from year to year. I 100% okay. agree with you, and as, as an audience member, it's very distinct, and it's, I appreciate that about the Blue Devils as well, especially more and more the older I get and the more I learn about everything and how this whole world Now that works. I don't have to compete against you. Yeah, um, I, but, I think that the yeah, uh, what Fantini is talking about the approach is. It, you said the same thing. The show comes first, like that doesn't change, which seems simple enough. But other some people, I don't know. You get in your own head sometimes, and you start thinking about, well, what about this? What about this? What about me? What about me? Uh, but I think, as in, you do what you do. It's the way that you guys do it, and the way that you operate, the way that you design the show, the way that you teach the show, like there is a structure there that is pretty unique, I would say, as far as like the way they stage it and then they chart it later. That's definitely not the approach that most organizations take. Well, and, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, we would love to win percussion every year and win brass every year and win color guard every year and win visual every year, which we kind of almost do. But that's my, that's the, that's the Rudy's. That's, that's the drum staff. That's the drummers. That's what they're in charge of. That's all they have control over. I mean, I have control over, more than they do right so i look at the big picture more than anybody more than my staff obviously but what they have control over i mean is they, they want to win that dang drum trophy and sometimes they disagree with me and making a few calls going no it's going to be better upstairs we got to do this change which might cost us downstairs a tick or two a tenth or two but you got to do it for if it's going to be worth it upstairs i'll take you know a tenth upstairs over a tenth downstairs any day if that's if you got to weigh that out right and some of the guys will disagree with that at times but that's you know that's why I have veto power. I'm the old guy, so that always works. <laughs> the wisdom. Uh, <laughs> or no, just the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think another thing unique about you and just your relationship to the core is the amount of time that I see you with the core. Uh, a lot of the times now you see the staff announcements and there's like 10 snare techs or 7 quad techs or 5 base techs. Base techs. And I, I get that because they're yep, trying to like yep. make sure that people can – not put all of life on hold. People have summer. lives make, outside of drum corps. Um, you know, still make a day. living. Absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. But you all have the luxury in position to where it seems like you're there 90, 85% of the time. And Rudy's there a lot of the time. And the guys that are on there, they're on there a lot of the time. Um, so I think that does present a unique continuity that just other groups don't have. Well, it's, it's, it's consistency. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's, it's easy to just say it's consistent, you know? I mean, I, I do more road than I should, 
<laughs> on tour. I mean, I, I live on that bus pretty much. Last year I did, um, God, I think out of like 50 days, there's maybe like 42, you know, on tour. Um, Rudy does most of the tour, if not all of it. He takes a week off in early season, but then he's on for everything else. So the, the performers are getting consistent feedback all the time. You know, we I might have a bet. snare tech come in or every now and then and switch, but I guarantee you those snare techs who came through this program are saying the same thing. I would bet if you look at all of the top percussion sections or the majority of them, they have the most staff consistency throughout the entirety of the summer compared to other groups that don't finish as highly as them. Now there's, there's talent differentials, there's design differentials, but in terms of, like you just said, they're getting consistent information. I don't know how the whole Rennick organization works or how many different techs they have coming in and out, but I would bet even whether it's two for the whole summer or five, they all have the same thought process and how they approach hitting the drum. They all yeah. came through that Rennick program or with you guys, if you have to have bring in a couple techs, like you just said, they all have the same background. And I bet when no, you look no, at those no. top, top four or five percussion sections, those staffs are going to be as consistent as humanly possible throughout the entire, entire summer. Years ago, I had a, uh, someone sent me their resume that wanted to teach the battery, you know, and I said, well, I don't know you. Um, what have you done? You know, and I was trying to be nice. And then I finally go, listen, I, I hire my friends. I hire the guys that came through the Blue Double program because I know they know what we do and they know the philosophy that I teach and that they're going to carry on. And I go, so I hire my friends. And so the guy, he got like real violent and sent an email to our director saying, I can't believe Scott Johnson only hires friends. How, how does, what does that mean for everybody else? You know, and he just went off on my director. And, I, and I, at the time it was Dave Gibbs, the director. And I, I told Dave, I go, I hope you lit him up. <laughs> I hope he didn't let that just slide through. I go, I hired the guys that I know are going to teach well yeah. and teach what we do. You, you basically know? hire people you know is basically well, what you're selling him. People I you mean, trust. Yeah, you trust and, us. I mean. And you got to get along. It's a long yeah. summer. It's a long season. Yes, and Brian. guess what? You're living together. Yeah. If there's you're any gonna, issues at all, it's not going to be good. Period. You're going to argue. So, you got to know how to argue with somebody you know. Like, it's it's different when you're arguing with someone who sees the opposition is like, we're both trying to do the right thing. We just don't agree on this thing. Uh, versus somebody's like, I don't know if you know that we're trying to do the right thing here or not, yeah. or if you're just trying to get your way. So, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was, um, it was funny. I almost wanted to fly the guy out and just put him in front of the drum line and say, okay, go. Cause the drum line probably eat him up. <laughs> <laughs> this year may have been slightly different, but for most years now, like now that you do take a much more, behind the scenes or higher role in the organization and construction of the ensemble and just the design process. Do you feel like your presence just being there, even though you're maybe not like out on the field as much is still just as important as it was in 94? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, guess I still, I still enjoy it. Yeah. I, I still, Try to stay as current as possible. Um, I, I, can I still, guess let me rephrase. I can still it, play. So. I, no, I, I can still play pretty well to demonstrate things on the guys. Not like I used to when I was out there twenty four seven, but enough to walk up and no, it sounds like this guys and play a little bit and then walk away and you know shake it off later. But um, <laughs> I guess another way to ask that is, uh, do you feel like you can still have the same importance without having to do as much? in regards right. to that's like, why I had, yeah that's why yeah. i hired rudy yeah <laughs> <laughs> rudy is literally doing what i used to do right now for the blue devils he's the guy that runs the tracking sessions he's the guy that clicks sticks in the lot you know when we're going through exercises and shows i mean that's what i did forever you know and then it got to the point where okay i'm i'm, I'm too tired rudy do this <laughs> you know <laughs> So now he, he's doing exactly what I used to do. I'm still there and I'm still there and I'm still making my suggestions and I'm still getting there and cutting and let's start this again. And what the hell are you thinking about snares and what happened to your left hand? And, you know, I'm still that, that tech guy. It's, that's I'll, I'll always be a tech guy. That's where I started the float back in the day, you know, so yeah. that'll never change. But um, the fact that I'm looking at what's going to be the best for the core now, you know, because we talked about a little bit earlier. I mean, if the battery is jamming as far as tempo control, 
that means the guard's going to be more consistent. That means the brass are going to be more consistent. And thank God that means the front ensemble is not going to have that roller coaster of tempo to try to lock into, right? If it's consistent, if we can be consistent in the battery, the rest of the core is going to benefit greatly from that. 100%. Oh, yep. yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, but not in the lot. I just had to go back there. <laughs> Dude, unfortunately, they uh, maybe one day DCL will figure out a way to get like fan access to like on field judge like there you go. games or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we, got... we need to bring maybe that's what it. We get the judges back out on the field and we can be there. Uh, you can like do a pay per view buy to follow the drum judge around on a GoPro and see what he sees for the whole show. I'd pay that money drone, for that. Man. I would that pay for that. The drone, yes, the dr Absolutely. drone. You know, hey, I'm I'm there. I'm there. I think it'd be awesome. You can Dude. program the drone or have somebody fly it around. Yeah. That we'll would, get the uh, staff guys who knows the show fly it around. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, we can't like, get a drum judge on the field. We get a drone out there. Let's go. <laughs> that's marketable. I Fair. mean, there's all these electronics now, and, like, there's sound design people who do a world of good for ensembles. we got to get a drone guy. Flow, hey, take you. notes. Dude, then we can just uh, – we can all get out there on the field, and then – I'll call ticks from my couch and then make rash judgments you, on my yeah. podcast. You do now. You do now. That's true. Right? We really do. I mean, <laughs> armchair warriors. Uh, yeah. Totally uh, recognize this. Always easier dude. from the couch. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. I'm oh, yeah. Drinking beer and you're just like, so, the, more the, the more the beer you drink, the better the groups get. It's great. I, I want to ask a question here real quick before we get too far away from it on we've we've referenced the new judging system and how we feel about it and everything. We threw something at Jeff Brooks on here that a suggestion of how to alter how we've made it at this point of the two judge system, but not the traditional like box judge field judge like I mean battery judge and front judge. You get a front ensemble specialist, you get a battery specialist. The front judge will still be able to evaluate the front-to-back connection, the interplay between the battery and the front from the front of the front ensemble. And then you have that battery guy who, if you're talking about safety, if he needs to just beeline it to the 20-yard line, he's going to miss a whole lot less and get involved in the horn line and guard way less to get back to the front because he's not thinking about that. He goes, oh, I have to go to the 20 for a second. And then when the horn line gets out of the way, I can get back there and I miss 20 seconds. I think that would be an amazing system and honestly, even if you just did it for regionals and finals, like you don't do it for every show. It's, we talked about that years ago. That's that's definitely been brought up. Yeah. You know, front ensemble and it, even to the point where, okay, you just do front ensemble, you just do battery, you stay with the battery the whole freaking show. Don't even leave the battery. Even during the ballad, kneel down with them, whatever. You know, you stay with the battery. That's been talked about many times and it still puts that judge on the field. Um, the biggest issue was where does that second judge go? Where does that pit judge go? Upstairs? Right in front of the pit. Either on that the or... On the track, either, right in front yeah. of the front. Yeah. Well, I mean, we used to have two percussion judges. Yeah. Back when I marched for many, many years, and they did the rotation thing. They just circled the drum line in the front ensemble at the time. You know, so you got a, a, a more of a pure evaluation. That was also before the drills got and props got to what they are today. That's and that, that, that very changed good point. The activity, that changed the activity big time, right? Sure. I blame the cadets in the 80s for going so fast. Their fault. <laughs> Running gun, baby. Um, yeah, really. But yeah, I think that there is a version that credits both front and battery more equal than it does right now. Well, we've, mean... we've, we've tried for decades to figure it out. I mean, I was one of the guys, I was on the task force back in the early 2000s, me, Mike McIntosh, and Neil Larrabee, that mm -hmm. we brought in percussion too. We pushed percussion two through, you know, a person upstairs that would evaluate the percussion section only, front ensemble and battery. And if the judge is back with the battery and he gets stuck back there, stay there. Safety factor, stay there. Mm -hmm. There's a guy up there that's checking out the front ensemble and everything else going on. It's okay. You know, if the battery's back in the back sidelines during the ballot and the judge is back there, don't run through the core. Either go around the side or just chill there. We got another guy already checking it out. Yeah. You know, so that was that was the whole philosophy behind percussion too, which I what was still the think issue? money. Money. It's all, all, all money. When you add another judge to a DCI shows, and this is we, we we did regionals later, but at the time it was every show. And you think about how many shows there are in a season, hotel, airfare, it's you know, over hundred and fifty thousand dollars you have to add to the budget for DCI judges. So it became I... crazy. So we said, Okay, we'll just take them in regionals. 
Let's yeah. do that. You know, and I actually wrote down all my notes from our percussion two friend. Because in um, 08, and I don't remember what year we actually did that. I, I couldn't remember what year I was on the task force. I was on it too many times. But it was in the early 2000s, I believe. And then in 08, our friend um, George Hopkins, he put in a rule to eliminate the percussion two judge completely because numbers weren't working out right and he didn't think it was a good thing. That failed, thank God. So we kept them on. And then in 2014, uh, we saw percussion two at the first shows of the year and regionals only, and there was no field judge. I don't know if you I guys remember that. that. I, I remember there that. There was a time where the yep. only drum judge was upstairs until like July 4th, which yep. was a weird date. That's rough. And then we got to go on the field. You might as well but there's still just one the judge. Yeah there, was, yeah, there was still just one judge. You know, and then, um, I mean, it went on. 16, uh, percussion two at every show, percussion one at regionals only. So there was a judge upstairs for every show except the regionals, and then they got to be on the field for one show, which was even more stupid. <laughs> And that happened again in uh, 17, and then in 18, it was just percussion one only. We got rid of percussion two. And here's the thing. Nobody told us percussion two was gone. It what? was never an email, a notice, a Congress, a DCI announcement. We get to the first shows, and it's like, okay, who's, who's on percussion tonight? Blah, blah, blah. Who's doing percussion two? There is no percussion two. What do you mean there's no percussion two? <laughs> what? Literally, it, it just it literally disappeared. That's wild. And I can tell wild. you for a fact because I'm a stats guy, and I already had all my stats figured out for percussion one, percussion two, percussion one, percussion, you know, for uh -huh. fill in the blanks. And I'm going, what are you, what are you talking about? Nobody told us, and it just disappeared. And when I, of course, when I went crazy and ballistic and grabbed John Phillips, who was the head of judge, and I go, what the hell's going on? What happened to percussion two? Yeah, well, the finance kicked in, and it's just, it's not going to happen. And that was the answer I got. That's the, the only answer. Finance I got. kicked in. But when we go to regionals, we can double up the GE panel and also double up the music analysis panel, but yep. we can't double yep. up the percussion panel, even though, yep. and I get like, there are like somebody said like, well, the color guard, color guard, it's like, well, color guard is probably easier in my opinion. I'm not, in my opinion, my crude opinion to judge from a distance, like a little bit, because you can see more your audio doesn't matter as much uh as long as like things are happening at the same time but like the percussion realm it's just so nuanced and when you're trying to split hairs between these world-class ensembles every group is so good it? in those top five six groups you have yeah. to be able to get in there and evaluate that individual diddle that one person ticked and if yep. you're yep. 50 yards of play away it's really well, not, hard not to not do even that, that. If you're on the track in front of the speakers, you're not going to Yeah, it, it, it just hearing it in general. You have to be, I mean, to adjudicate the battery, you have to be behind the speakers. Yep. For yes. most groups, if not mm -hmm. all of them. Otherwise, if you're, you're not going to get that clarity through the stuff coming out of those speakers. You're not going to be able to hear that. You know, so you got to get behind the speakers to even hear that stuff. And I, I couldn't agree with you guys more. Maybe one yeah. day. I could, we could rant about that for hours. But <laughs> oh, we had that one day, unfortunately, but now we, we got to get it back. I know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, things have changed and evolved, and some of them are great. I mean, the tick system was a thing. I don't necessarily disagree with getting rid of that. I do like the sense of, like, a credit system uh, as far as, like, you're rewarding things more than you are subtracting. But Build up versus tear down. But execution does matter. I mean, clean is the best type. Clean is forever. That's it's, the only way to credit the members the most. Like, if you're not yeah. crediting execution... You're basically, it's a design competition. Well, and when we got the percussion two judge in there, the argument that we made that, that I came up with was, you can hear a great brass ensemble anywhere, right? Not just drum corps. You yep. can hear really good brass ensembles anywhere in the world, right? You can see great dancers anywhere in the world. You are not going to get this type of percussion performance other than drum corps. It's a very specialized thing for our activity where you, some colleges come close, but no, they don't get into the details. They don't have the time to get into the details. Yeah. You yeah. know, so you're never going to get that, th th that quality of what a DCI percussion line brings to the activity. But you can see all that from all the other captions. That's easy to find other stuff. You can see great movement on stages, you know, you could, but you're not going to ever get that other than the drum corps activity. So why are we screwing that up with just one judge? It, to me, it makes no sense at all. I love that. I agree. We're going to have to have uh, 
Mike Leitsky and Jeff Brooks and all these people back on. I'm going to challenge them. I'm, I'm, but that's not their rules. They don't. They just no, they abide don't. to the. They abide to the the rules that they're given. The parameters. No, but they, they, they trust me. They agree with us. They they want to be out there. They want to oh, be out there. I know. I've talked. We've we've about. talked to both of them and Off a the few air. others. So exactly. we're aware. Uh, but 